Hey, guess what? We're between the sheets. The sheets of styrene, that is. Uh, I've been waiting for this stuff uh, to arrive so I can start my next project. And uh, pretty excited about it, actually. And, uh, I went online and did a big search, or just did a quick search for uh, styrene and uh, sheets of plastic. And I came upon a company called U.S. Plastics, and uh, here's their catalogs. I'm kind of excited, too, because they apparently sell tanks. Uh, uh, I don't know if that's like an M1A1 or maybe a World War II vintage Sherman tank. I don't know. It just says tanks. So, uh, but tanks and tubing, but they also sell, uh, as you can tell, giant sheets of styrene and uh, thicknesses all the way from uh, ten thousandths of an inch up to a tenth of an inch. And as you can see, the sheets come in um, 40 inch by 72 inches. I think that's what I got. Yeah, 40 inches by 72 inches. I got uh, 30 thousandths and a 40 thousandths sheet. And I'm going to use this for my backdrops uh, over on the, the news section. But what I, I really wanted to do with this was because I wanted to have more of a contour, the standard masonite that I've been using um, isn't going to work real well. You can bend it, but you, you know you either got to get it wet and then slowly form it, or you know. But I've seen guys use this, and uh, it works out really well. And the price was, let's see, um, oh, the prices aren't on here. Um, but let, let's put it this way: I paid about twenty-five dollars uh, for these two giant sheets of of styrene. So for you guys that do a lot of scratch building or even kit bashing, you know, I, I now this doesn't have any, you know, there's no, this isn't siding, you know, like your evergreen styrene, or, you know, there's nothing, uh, there's no, you know, there's a texture to it, but it, it doesn't have any detail or anything like that. So, but it could be used as the underside of a building. Um, and uh, I've got some experimenting to do because the plan for the backdrop is to take some PVC uh, conduit or uh, possibly water line, uh, something small in PVC uh, that this will adhere to easily. Uh, because PVC is made of similar materials to the styrene, I can use the same type of um, plastic bond that I use, the plastic welder, and uh, this should adhere right to it. So I'm planning to cut um, posts out of the PVC and put those into the styrofoam uh, and hear them in place with some of the uh, uh, same uh, liquid nails uh, Loctite that I use to put the track in place. And then once I've got those posts set up, this is, is flexible enough, um, yet sturdy enough that I'll be able to adhere that to the posts and that'll create my backdrop. So the other thing I got, um, I went, uh, I was running low on the UltraCal uh, that I have been using for my roads and uh, decided, well, I'm going to order some more of that up. So I got industrial sized tub of, um, this time I went with USG from the same company. If you go to, I think it's US Gypsum or is it just gypsum.com? Oh, plaster.com. Sorry. If you go to plaster.com, it's, it's ultimately US Gypsum. Um, that's the company. Uh, but they have this hobby plaster. And I did some reading up, and it sounds like it's very similar to what you'd get if you bought uh, Woodland Scenics uh, Smooth It, I think they call it. Uh, but it says that it takes paint really well. You can mold it and everything like that. Ultimately, I'm going to use it for roads and, you know, stuff like that. So I don't care how it molds. But that if I can get it flat and then sand it, that's ultimately what I'm looking for. So, uh, I've got those things on tap. We'll see how far I can get with those projects. And I also have a few things that I did. Um, I started building one of the Cabri, uh, Kibri uh, bridges uh, that I'm going to be doing. Uh, those are quite fun kits to build, actually. I built one of them, I should say. Uh, but uh, the results are, are really nice. I've got to paint that yet, and i got to complete the other one. We'll see how far I get with that. And then... Um, I also uh, weathered all those new freight cars that I got uh, that I showed in the last uh, video 
And I, uh, while I was doing that, I just shot a quick video of how I weather the trucks. Um, I don't go into a ton of detail, uh, but the, the weathering of the trucks is pretty quick and easy, so I thought I'd share that. So a little bit of hodgepodge again of different projects this time around, but hopefully uh, keeps everybody interested and a, a little something for everybody. Okay, so conducting a few experiments here. This is, uh, I picked up some uh, half-inch PVC pipe. It's just your standard water pipe, nothing special there. And then uh, this is some of the uh, 20 thousandths thick uh, styrene sheet that I showed in the beginning. And I just used the um, same stuff, professional plastic welder from uh, Micromark. Uh, 10X7R, Ambrose, plastic welder I think are all the same thing. Um, but that worked pretty well. It, it actually, uh, because the PVC is same, made of, this, of a similar material to the styrene, um, I think they have the basic same structural compound or uh, chemistry. So I picked up a can of this Krylon um, for plastic. The only thing is, is this blue is, is, I don't know, it's just a little bit dark. So what I'm hoping to do is maybe not go as heavy in my coats. And if I need to, maybe come in with this as a base coat and then I've got a can of flat white and I might come over once it's dry maybe come over the top of it then I don't need to worry about it being a plastic specific paint this will adhere to the plastic and then the other white will adhere to that and then I also picked up a can of matte finish um, so this is a gloss because unfortunately that's all I had so I might come over with the matte finish and hopefully that'll dull it up a little bit I'm also interested to see how this works as a sealant for weathering cars I've heard some people say that this um, isn't the best but I thought maybe I'd use it on one of the scrap models that I have or you know and try and seal up a car and see how this looks but it was only like five dollars so not a bad deal well as predicted that's uh, way too dark um, uh, that that uh, that'd be a good maybe dusk color <laughs> for the sky but definitely not a midday uh, color so I'm gonna go ahead let this dry go over it with a little bit of white and see what happens and go from there yeah that didn't turn out at all <laughs> yeah that's pretty terrible actually so uh, uh, I gotta come up with a new solution for how to solve this problem in the meantime I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut a whole bunch of these in uh, 13 inch length so I'm I'm allowing an inch um, into the styrofoam since that's with the styrofoam bases so I'll have an inch underneath um, and then maybe I'll go around the layout and, and actually apply these as I come and try and come up with a solution as to how to paint the the styrene for a backdrop back to the drawing board well I went ahead and I took some of the blue latex house paint that I've been using on all of my masonite backdrops and uh, it's not necessarily made for PVC uh, no doubt about that however it appears to be adhering pretty well um, to the styrene that I've got so I tested it on a small scale just on this piece and um, I've been kind of flexing this just kind of toying around with it just to kind of aggravate it a little hopefully get it to chip and crack and now long term I don't know you know once this paint actually dries and becomes less flexible like right now it's it's only been drying for maybe a couple hours um, you know it's dry to the touch but it's definitely not you know they they say 30 days before this stuff really is, is dry when you look on the box on the uh, container so my worry is is that I apply this and then you know it once it actually starts to dry and harden that it's just going to start cracking and flaking off however for now I mean it it's on there pretty good it's not really coming off I can't peel it off um, I think I'm gonna forge ahead with it just because it's the color I want and you know worst case scenario I I gotta redo it um, I guess it's a risk I'm willing to take so while I was working waiting for this to dry I cut some more of the posts so I have a whole bunch of uh, 13 inch length posts and uh, these will become the I'm going to place these throughout the layout and these will become the support structure for the uh, the backdrop itself 
and I'm gonna actually go ahead and I'm gonna try using this this piece here is the 20 thousandths thick and I thought this was gonna be too thin that it was gonna be a little too flexible but I think if I place these close enough together uh, this will actually work out okay and um, it's just going to be a backdrop. I'm not going to be hanging anything on it. It's not going to be a, a structure or anything like that. Um, so again, I'm, I'm going to risk it, give it a try, see what happens. And if it doesn't work, well, I've got to redo it. All right, I know this appears like I'm uh, making a wind farm here, but uh, in actuality, these are just the supports and I've kind of just placed them out where I think they should go. Um, this is going to be the curve in through here, so I think I'm going to place actually one more in here just to give it a nice gradual curve. And the advantage of the, using the round poles is that there's no sharp edges, so however they go in, and it should help, hopefully, what I'm really hoping is that it really kind of holds the, a nice curve on everything. But this is the plan here. Um, I'll pan over here. you can see that's that's going to end up being the the rough and I'm going to add some more off in the distance over there and then back over here um, I'm actually going to probably add one that goes out that way to create a scene in this area than the bridge scene itself so um, if I come back over here basically what I did is I just took this um, particular one I, I pressed it down to just give an imprint in this area I came back with my exacto blade and then uh, cut it out and then just pressed it into place and I kind of went underneath here with my hand so I know where it is flush and then I'm gonna go ahead and try the foam board Loctite and uh, use my carpenter square to square it up make sure that he's square on at least a couple of the sides I could get a I don't have a small level um, but uh, just to make sure he's relatively upright so all right so quick overview I uh, popped holes in into the styrofoam and then uh, put all of the posts in you can see I've got them I ended up spacing them out uh, a little bit closer in this corner here and uh, just to hopefully round that off. And one of the things I wanted to show, what I decided to do, so like I said, uh, for those who didn't watch the last video, I used this um, uh, foam board um, from Loctite. And uh, one of the tricks that I've been meaning to share too is uh, a lot of times after you use uh, one of these and you, you cut it open and you don't use the entire tube, you end up... Um, you know, sometimes you put a nail, some of them come with a nice cap that you can put over the top. What I do is I just take a little bit of hot glue and uh, actually hot glue around the tip here. And it, it does a really nice job. It ends up sealing, but it doesn't, the hot glue doesn't really adhere to the nozzle itself. Um, so it's really easy. I'm not going to do it now because I'm done with it, but it's really easy to peel this off. But it creates a nice airtight seal so you don't get that dried out effect in the, uh, the nozzle here and then having to try and pluck it out and so this works really well but um, so I used that and I just uh, used a scrap piece of styrofoam and uh, trying to get this in frame here I can't see it on the screen there we go and um, I just uh, gooped it up here and then I would take the there's a extra one and I just roll the end uh, about an inch up and then I took my finger and kind of just gooped the hole itself um, to kind of put some in the hole. And then I just, you know, pressed it into place. And then uh, using my carpenter square, I lined everything up to make sure that at least in two axes it was straight up and down. Uh, the other thing I did is I had this scrap piece from when I cut the 13 inch lengths out of the pipe. And so what I did is I took my Dremel tool and I just put a really rough, you know, chamfer on it. And, um, but what I did was, is once I marked this, you know, in the styrofoam, uh, I would, uh, cut it with my X-Acto knife and then I'd use this to just kind of finish the hole off and you just kind of twist it and it would kind of create a nice plug actually. And then it would pop out. I just pop it out of this thing and I'd have a real nice clean hole, um, to then put the, the goop in and, 
and insert the the rod itself. So so we're going to let that dry and then uh, next I think we'll be cutting the actual material for the backdrop. So next up. Now the beauty of uh, the stuff that I've done or this, this uh, styrene sheet that I bought is you can cut it just with a good pair of uh, tin snips or in this case I guess we'll call them styrene snips. Um, good sharp tool uh, like always. I bet you you could probably even cut the thinner stuff with a pair of scissors. Uh, but the good thing about the um, tin snips is they're they're formed and made to be cutting uh, thicker pieces of material like a sheet metal or in this case a styrene. Uh, their jaws are made to deflect the material up and away um, and give you a good uh, clean area to work with. So um, I got these from my dad. Uh, he was a tinsmith by trade so nice and sharp good set of tools so the only thing I will caution you on is that the I don't know if you can see it but the edge of the styrene is a little bit sharp and being dry skin uh, crack and bleed it but so I've got uh, I don't know if this is going to show but here's a 12 inch piece a little bit of a rough rough edge in some areas you know I I apparently failed my preschool uh, cutting straight lines class because I didn't follow the line perfectly but it's a backdrop and it's going to get painted and, and it'll be uh, well it'll be hard to tell once it's up hopefully so okay so final stages of the backdrop stuff um, I'm kind of positioning them into place here and you can see here I've got a, a joint and uh, the the paint is a little tacky still so I don't want to work with it too much but I wanted to kind of wrap things up here for this video um, before before calling it good uh, so basically I've got a this is what's left of the the thinner sheet um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a basically a splice piece and put that in to join these two pieces together and then uh, as the experiment showed I can still use the same stuff uh, plastic welder and apply them to the the posts that I've got in place and um, on the end, uh, at the start, I'm just applying it to the side of each post, and then I'm going to paint the post blue as well to kind of hopefully hide it a little bit uh, into the, the background and everything. And then I'll have to trim it up over there on that end, and I'll probably have some extra pieces, but that's okay. I can find a place for them. So uh, not much more to show. I don't want to work on this too much. Like I said, it's, it's still tacky, but I want to get a video uploaded. so. Um, for now, we're going to call this good, and we'll we'll pick up more of this in the the next video, I think. So one of the uh, conundrums that I ran into with uh, trying to apply a double-sided backdrop to the same posts, um, one side was really easy, as you can see here. It, it's attached pretty well, and then this one obviously was was pretty easy because it's on the end. How do I apply the glue to here? This. Uh, plastic welder isn't like a glue. You, you kind of have to work quickly and it, where you apply it, it then you know melts the plastic and it, the plastic quickly returns to a solid state, hopefully creating a joint between the two plastics that you have. Um, unfortunately, you can't really apply it and then hopefully press it into place. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. In my case, it hasn't been working. So, what I decided to do was I took a uh, pipe cleaner that I have. It's quite long and get some on the end and then just run it up and down the joint. That gets it into place and you can see I can just uh, apply it up and down and it rolls real nice along the, uh, the joint. Uh, get, getting the glue right where I want it to be and then as the end of it becomes somewhat sticky from the plastic because it will pick up some of the plastic from the end all you have to do then is just cut it off and, and keep going and, and this is long enough that I'm getting down you know almost pretty much to the bottom with the glue and I can come at it from both angles so uh, just a, a quick thought if you ever run into something like this and are you doing the same situation uh, think about a pipe cleaner well, I've decided to start working on the uh, truss bridges and getting a little ahead of myself but uh, kind of the reverse of a cooking show I guess in this case. Uh, so this is a completed truss. It comes in uh, obviously in kit form but it comes in multiple parts. 
and then it comes split in half and it comes in like this so you get uh, two pieces like this and then you get the reverse uh, two pieces um, on the opposite side and then uh, to create the the truss itself you actually sandwich the two together and you can see there's one on each side here and then you put the uh, the detail pieces in you can see the uh, the grid work I don't know if it'll show up but there's all the grid work and everything in there um, it, it actually looks more complicated than it is it's, it's quite a simplistic process uh, the kits really well done uh, unfortunately the, the instructions I will say are a little vague um, this is a, a Kibri kit uh, and it's uh, mostly in, in German, but uh, it tells you to follow the guidelines uh, exactly and not to deviate from them. The only thing it doesn't really tell you that I found out the hard way is, is you should really assemble the entire, um, the whole, each side uh, as one large unit here. So put these two halves together, so essentially putting these together like so first uh, and then putting them together as a sandwich as the actual truss. I didn't do that on this one I made each side one and then the other and uh, that made it a lot more difficult to make the joints in here. I, I don't think it's gonna cause any real issues but uh, I definitely made it a little bit harder I think on myself so uh, nothing real big to show uh, I'm just using it says use uh, only a certain type of Kibri plastic adhesive however I found that the uh, the Micromark same stuff plastic welder uh, works really well and I'm using just a micro brush uh, to apply it the plastic doesn't deform all that much which is really nice um, and then so what I'm doing is I'm just applying it uh, sparingly where I know pieces will be hidden you know so like in in these areas on these tabs where there's uh, joists that run up and down and then diagonally uh, on the detail parts in here you can apply it in these uh, channels on the kit and then uh, there's just uh, channels for each one but even if you apply it to the side of it it doesn't deform like the Walther's kit does this plastics pretty uh, robust um, so obviously you want to keep it off the you know detail parts you can see there's rivet detail on here uh, you definitely don't want to get it on there but for the most part it's it's a pretty nice kit so I've got uh, two of these to build so I'm well I've got half of one done so I guess I'm a quarter of the way done building halves and then I've got all the support structure for the track you can see here I've got to build all of these guys and then the uh, the actual track structure here looks like there's going to be some I-beams that roll through here and then I gotta figure out how to put the track on here um, and then this is just uh, finalizing the bridge you can see they've got like uh, pieces that run along the top here so but again a really nice kit I'm really enjoying it and uh, gonna keep going here I wanted to take a quick shot of the uh, finished bridge and uh, one of the things as I finished building it I realized uh, the clearance of the the overall bridge. Now a couple things this is just a piece of flex track that I threw in here um, when I finally finished the bridge what I plan to do is take uh, the rail off of some flex track uh, solder it to some circuit board ties and then use some ties that I use for handling switches to create the um, track actually over the bridge. Now most of the time the ties are a lot closer on track over bridges um, and then there's also generally the uh, the inner guardrails and I would like to to model those as well. So but so this is a uh, the height of it's going to be roughly what, what we see here uh, however most importantly was that clearance as you can see there's not a whole lot there um, so I'm gonna have to be sure that the track is adhered down to the bridge itself pretty well 
Uh, and this is your, you know, obviously one of my highest with the double stacks. I don't run a lot of double stacks, but I still needed to make sure it cleared. But it does, so uh, we're good there. Um, but overall, that's the uh, the finished bridge structure. Now I got to build another one. All right, little little quick uh, segment here. Uh, nothing nothing real detailed. Uh, nothing real long. I uh, just wanted to show, I'm, I'm in the process, I, I got all those new cars I showed in one of the previous videos that I just did, and um, before I put anything on the layout, I, I like to just give everything a, a quick weathering, uh, nothing fancy, nothing real detailed, uh, just a wash, and then, you know, some powders, or just airbrushing, you know, just to dull up the, the paint on the, on the models themselves. Um, and one of the things I discovered that works really well for this is these Floquil enamel paint markers. And I've got, uh, I think I mentioned these in a previous video, I think when I did the um, uh, diorama that one time, I used these to paint the rails. So it comes in, uh, this particular set came with uh, rail tie brown and rail brown. And to me, they look a little bit more green than anything, but that's okay. I use these on the wheels and the trucks themselves. Um, just spinning the wheels, um, you know, I'll, uh, let's go ahead and do one here. So I'll use the rail brown and get the flow going. You just got to sometimes punch the tip down. So I got the paper towel here and then I uh, put it in the wheel surface and then just spin the wheel with my other finger and that gets a real good coat inside the wheel there. And it also avoids touching the, uh, the needle tip of the um, axle so you don't gum the works up. Uh, so then I'll do the same thing on this one, then flip them over, do the same thing here, do the same thing here. And so now the wheel surfaces are uh, good and weathered. And then the next thing that I do is um, I just take the pen again and uh, I put it to the surface of the the back of the wheel and then roll the wheel along like that and then do it again I know you can't really see it but uh, it uh, gets the back of the wheel set real well um, so I'll do that just to get a good coat on and that's what's the beauty of these pens is uh, the paint is evenly applied and if you need to get more to come out you just tap it on a paper towel and then I do the axle, just kind of go along, get the axle. You don't really see this under the car, but, you know, it helps to dull the surfaces and in case you do see them. And then I'll come back and do the other side. Once I have the wheel surfaces done, I come back with uh, rail tie brown, and then I do the, the actual truck fr side frames. And I just, uh, I'm not looking to get, you know, every surface evenly coated here. Because uh, once I, one, it's it's weathering. So again, it's it's never an exact thing. You're never going to get an even coat. And uh, then the other thing is, is right after I do this, while the paint is still a little bit wet, uh, before it fully dries, I um, grab the, the entire assembly here. So you can see I've just got a little bit of a green, it's got a green hint to it. So I just take a old clothespin. So here I've just got a tray and this is just an old piece of um, cardboard. And I've got my AIM weathering powders here so I just mix them up almost using this as like a palette. You can see I've been using this for a long time. So I use a little bit of um, rust and then just a little bit of grime kind of mix it together and then uh, take the truck and and just kind of dab some on and with the paint being wet um, this gives the truck kind of a textured feel to it which is really nice it it kind of gives you know rust and the trucks themselves always have a real hard look to them they, they are they're they've never been painted in general um, usually it's raw, raw metal surfaces, you know, so they've always got a real gritty feel to them. Um, so I feel like with the paint being wet, it, it kind of grabs the powders and, and creates that, that surface. So then, uh, 
that's kind of the finished product. Um, a little bit of rust mixed in there, a little bit of dirt, you know, and then you can see on the other side. And I'll do that with both trucks. Just kind of dust it in, spin the wheel a little bit while it's in there. And again, it's that's why the paint doesn't really matter how it coats because I ultimately just come back with this and if you put it on too heavy, you can just kind of give it a and it comes off a little bit. And if you want to be more specific, you can take some of the red and put it right on the springs or you know, on the bearing caps and stuff like that. But uh, you know, ultimately, it's just better than the the straight black of the uh, factory plastic and then the, the wheel sets themselves it hides the metal sheen but the great thing about you know metal wheel sets is they've still got the red the silver wheel tread um, you still got the silver wheel tread there so it's kind of realistic in that regards but uh, it hides the black and stuff like that and because I'm working on kind of an assembly line here and I've got so many cars to do I just have this old egg carton and normally I use this as my engine tray so if I've got to work on an engine I'll flip the engines over and set them in here and the, uh, the egg carton holds the, the engine or the car real well without damaging things too much. In this case I've just gone ahead and uh, labeled. I just put a label in here so like in this case I've got uh, Walther's double door box car and I know that's the truck that goes with this so then I just drop the trucks in there like that they can dry in there and uh, I've got the screws to hold them in place in there as well um, and I'll just keep going and so that's kind of the assembly line for painting and weathering the trucks thanks again everybody for coming back and watching another video sticking with me again this one was kind of a little bit of a little bit of this a little bit of that um, the backdrop stuff is my big uh, kind of kickoff to the whole new area of the layout I figure once I've got the backdrop in place, I can kind of start picking and choosing what, what scenes I want to work on. It's also kind of critical because there's a switch there, um, a turnout, and a, a possible few other pieces of track that I want to lay. That until I have the backdrop in, I can't, uh, won't be able to figure out what I want to do with the backdrop building. And I actually have Walther's backdrop building that I think I'm going to just apply straight to the backdrop instead of having it come out. Um, it'll be a really low relief building. Um, thinking about making it like a sandpaper plant so I can uh, bring in two bay hoppers of, you know, um, sand and, you know, then paper products in uh, boxcars, things like that, and then outbound, obviously, um, of, of boxcars, things like that. You know, more switching opportunities. Um, keep this town uh, an active area when it comes time. So um, we'll see over time how the, the paint holds up on the backdrop. Um, you know, so far so good. It doesn't seem to be curling it too much. I want to get it um, glued down and hopefully that will prevent it from, from warping or, or anything too much further, uh, if at all. Ho hopefully not at all. So um, next video I, I guess we'll see where we are uh, I've got another bridge to finish and uh, once I get that maybe start the river scene I got the farm scene people have asked about um, handling some track uh, uh, some turnouts uh, using the jig that I have I would like to get to that um, I don't have a need for any turnouts at the moment I, I since I haven't started the portable yard yet I, I don't really have a need for them yet but I think that'll be definitely a future project. Well, on cue, there's the sound of the furnace kicking in. I got a great idea from a user, um, who uh, Bob, and I, uh, I, I don't have your username uh, with handy at the moment, but he suggested putting a um, possibly a, a blanket kind of just surrounding the furnace. So I'm going to try that, you know, giving it room to breathe, but kind of just creating a, a dampening effect, hopefully. We'll see if that helps drown the noise out a little bit. So next time, We'll uh, see what happens. And uh, thanks again, everybody, for watching. Thanks for subscribing. See you next time.